Hello, 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 welcome back to the channel. So let's continue our discussion on squeeze theorem and do this problem over here. So we have to calculate the limit of the sequence for this expression over here. So basically what we are doing is we are calculating the limit of n tends to infinity for cos of n plus n square over n in this case, right? So that is what we already know about limit of sequence and we have to calculate this value over here. So before watching this video, I'll highly suggest you to first watch my previous video on squeeze theorem so that you can get a better idea about what squeeze theorem actually is and how we use that theorem in order to check whether a series converges and diverges and also calculate the limit of the sequence for those sequences for which it's harder for us to calculate the limit for n tends to infinity for those sequences, right? So in this case as well, you can clearly notice that if we want to calculate the limit of n tends to infinity for this expression, it is harder to calculate this expression, right? But we know about one thing that since this is a cos function, we know that the cos function's value always lies between minus one and one, right? Doesn't matter what's inside the cos function, but we know that the range of cos function is always between minus one and one. So that is why in this case, we can conclude that cos of n plus n square upon n this expression's value is always less than or equal to 1 by n, right? Because cos of n plus n square would have the maximum value as 1. And the minimum value for this numerator would be minus 1, right? So we also know that it's always greater than or equal to minus 1 over n in this case, right? And now we have to calculate, in order to use squeeze theorem, we have to calculate the limit of n tends to infinity for this expression and this expression and check whether both of these limits are equal because this is our a of n, the middle sequence is c of n, the right sequence is, the rightmost sequence is b of n, right? So we are basically using this theorem over here that we already covered in the last video. This is the inequality that we have right now and we are checking whether our c of n original sequence converges or diverges and also calculating the limit of the sequence so now we have to calculate the limit n tends to infinity for a of n and b of n. So now they are easy to calculate, right? Limit n tends to infinity for a of n is basically limit n tends to infinity for minus 1 over n. And we know that if we take limit n tends to infinity, this expression will approach to 0 in this case. So this is 0. And similarly, if we want to calculate the limit n tends to infinity for our b of n, it is basically calculating limit n tends to infinity for 1 over n and this is also equal to 0. So now our second condition also holds true that the limit for this sequence over here and the limit of sequence for this sequence over here is also equal to 0. So since both of these sequences are equal to 0 and this inequality holds true as well, by squeeze theorem or by sandwich theorem, we can easily conclude that the limit of n tending to infinity for c of n, which is limit n tends to infinity for cos of n plus n square upon n is equal to zero in this case. So the limit of the sequence, the limit of the original sequence over here is equal to zero. And we didn't calculate it by taking the limit of n tends to infinity for this expression. Rather, we use the squeeze theorem in order to calculate the exact value of this limit over here. Right? So that was another example where we use squeeze theorem to calculate the limit of the sequence. So feel free to comment down in this video if you have any doubts. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.